<laughs> okay, if you uh, welcome everybody, if you don't yet have these two sheets of paper up front, you should come uh, grab a copy. The yeah, did you get it? Okay, so there's two sheets of paper. Let's go ahead and refocus our attention to the front. It's time for us to start. Uh, two sheets of paper, two handouts uh, for today. These are things so, uh, that you're not expected at all to be able to have any idea what's going on in them at this point. Um, in the first section, the morning section, we 
uh, covered most of the material for them, but we hadn't actually didn't get a chance to talk about the uh, exactly what these documents are yet. So morning section we'll be doing that on Friday. Maybe in this section we'll get to it or not the details. Uh, but this is a practice quiz for the actual quiz that you'll have next week. So in this class, every uh, Monday is when you'll be having your quizzes. So the first quiz will be Monday of next week, which will test a, uh, a CSS concept uh, that we'll be going over today in class. Uh, so again, CSS is, stands for the cascading style sheets. That's how you make a web page pretty. And we haven't talked about that yet. We'll talk about that today in class. Last time we talked about HTML, which is how you uh, just sort of define the content of a web page, get the text inside of it. And uh, so today we'll be making it pretty. Before we get to that though, we'll, a few quick announcements. There's the mouse. Um, so the two handouts, we're done with that. My office hours, those are now posted online. There we go. And if you go to the, the syllabus, down where the office hours spot was, you'll see this C number 85, C hash 85, pound 85. Anytime on GitHub you see something that looks like hashtag and then a number, that's going to take you to a particular issue. Um, and you can always actually just write in like an issue if you just wrote, say, in a different issue, wrote hashtag 85, it would automatically make a link to this issue. Um, these sorts of hashtags existed long before Twitter for, uh, we call this a project management system for linking different issues and projects to each other. But my uh, office hours are going to be sort of three steps. The first one is sort of standard office hours um, Monday and Wednesday, immediately after the first section. Also by appointment, and uh, so you can feel free to click here to see my schedule. Uh, generally, I'm not available on Tuesdays and Thursdays because I have to watch uh, my children then. Um, but Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, I'd be available for appointments. And also, you uh, should feel free to and I'm encouraging you to use the GitHub issues to ask questions. So if you have a question about anything, um, how to do something uh, in HTML or CSS, you can post it to uh, GitHub issues, creating a new issue, just that green button in the top right, and, and then I'll answer it. Um, importantly though, if, uh, and a number of you have been uh, sending me emails about different things related to class so far, and I've done my best to uh, answer them at this point, but after today, I will no longer answer any emails that you sent to me. With the caveat that if you send me emails about uh, your grade or you get sick, then uh, I'll talk about that over email, but everything else needs to go through GitHub issues. Two main reasons for that. One is, I guess the main one from a uh, classroom perspective, is so that everyone in class gets to see the question and the answer. We'll also see in a bit that there'll be a handful of student TAs. Uh, we have four of them for this class. They'll be able to answer on GitHub as well. And, uh, but also it's going to build your, um, your GitHub reputation. We talked about last week that uh, GitHub Git is a tool actually used by Microsoft and Google and NASA and Facebook and all these cool companies. And when you interview with them, they wanna know uh, about your GitHub profile and one of the things they'll look at is how do you communicate on github with other people and so this will be a chance for you to practice and get that uh that exposure that'll lift up your resume and that stack of applications to those big companies yes question uh where are we where are our office hours oh uh, excellent question so question is where are the office hours and it's uh so my off they're in my office uh adams 216 uh, it is also in the syllabus, if it's not in this post though. Uh, Adams 216 is the building directly next to this one. Uh, if you know where the cube is over there, it's directly to the left of the cube is where my office is. Um, good question, are there questions? Yeah. And are we allowed to talk to any of the four TAs or are there two assigned to our class? Oh, good question about um, TAs. So let's jump over to talking about the TA informa information real quick. Uh, so the uh, first is the QCL. 
Uh, so Erin Burke is our QCL mentor, and she's available on Sunday and Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Real quick reminder about all of the assignments in this class, homeworks and labs. They're technically due on Sunday, but if you do any sort of collaboration with anybody other than me outside of uh, class time, then you get the 48-hour extension. And so one way to get that 48-hour extension is you realize on Sunday you don't have enough time, you don't know what you're doing, and so you just go to the QCL, get some help with uh, Aaron to get started on the assignment. You don't have to finish it because then at that point you have the 48-hour extension. And this is not something that's only a one-time thing. It's you can do this for every assignment in the class and uh, that would be perfectly good. Um, so you can do this as many times as you want. Yes. The question is how to let me know about uh, this extension. And that's, uh, you'll do that on Sakai when you, um, uh, so I'll talk about Sakai here in a second. Well, let's just talk about Sakai now that your, as of an hour ago, you were not, none of you, or second section people were not on Sakai at all. Uh, you should now, though, all be on Sakai. I made another uh, GitHub issue post about that. And there's uh, two Sakai uh, pages, one that's for the section specifically. We're gonna ignore that one. Uh, they just are not able to delete that one, I guess. And then another one that is for the, all of CS40, that's the one that we'll be doing things in. In there is there, there's a spot to submit all the homeworks and labs. And under the submitting the lab section in Sakai, uh, there's always gonna be a text box. And in that text box, you just say, I collaborated with whoever in order to get the 48 hour extension. I'm never going to ask for proof. You don't have to get any sort of receipt from the QCL or if you're just working with other people in your dorms, that's also okay. You don't have to prove it to me. It's all on our system. Yes. So when you say like Sunday the night, does that mean Saturday 11 to 10 p.m. kind of thing, or is it Sunday? Like uh, it is before Monday. As long as you submit it before Monday, then you're good. Uh, let's see. So yeah, Erin is a uh, CS major through MUD, so she hasn't taken this uh, specific course before. Um, but she's been the tutor for, for this course before, and she's, she's really great, so you should use her as a good resource. There's also three other uh, TAs that are still uh, getting their paperwork straightened out, though. So uh, once they uh, get that, we'll have their information posted here as well. They will uh, have their, uh, their help periods, their help times on Mondays and Tuesdays so that uh, you can visit them with that 48 hour extension and get, uh, get the help before submitting. Any questions about anything office hour related? Okay. So real quick uh, review of the lab. I just want to, See, where did it go? Let's come back up here. Week zero, down to the lab. The main thing to uh, take away from this lab, all of these, uh, these concepts here, all of these instructions that you followed are, you don't have to have any of this memorized. You don't have to have any of Basically, you're never going to be quizzed on any of this stuff, but you are in the future going to have a lot of these sorts of tutorials that you're going to have to follow. And the main, hopefully, lesson that you took away from this is that following the instructions and actually reading them is very important. That many people um, uh, just missed this first step right here about um, actually creating the right name for your uh, GitHub repository. It's probably about somewhere between a third to a half of students in both sections. Um, and this is gonna be a, like a common principle in, in our, all of our future labs and assignments is that the instructions are like every word matters, sometimes even every comma in, in them matters. Uh, so pay close attention to them in the future. 
You also maybe noticed that, so these instructions I think were relatively clear. The uh, Google Analytics instructions, much less so. And also maybe a little bit out of date with what's actually going on in Google Analytics. Um, but working with other people is, makes figuring out those things much, much easier, especially one person figures out, here's the 15 steps of buttons to click, and then you do it. And then, uh, and then they can help everybody else out figure that out too. Uh, so helping, working with other people is going to uh, really be to your advantage in this class. And one of the things that I think a lot of uh, students in this class or maybe uh, can get worried about is you feel like, oh, I, I don't have a lot of programming background before, and so I don't want to, I feel uncomfortable working with other people or asking other people questions. Um, I think it's important to try to get over that as quickly as you can and get working with other people uh, that nobody is going to have all of the background of everything that we're doing in this class. Everybody, even people who have a little bit more experience, there's going to be lots of new things to them as well. Uh, but the sooner that you get over that, uh, I guess, feeling that you don't have enough background to even work with other people, the, the, the better, you'll, better off you'll be in the course. Uh, so those are the main two lessons to take away from Lab Zero. Today, we're going to talk about cascading style sheets, which again is uh, going to be the topic of your quiz next week. And it's also a very important thing for your homework. So we'll switch over to talking about the homework real quick. And then, and then we'll actually talk about what CSS actually is and how to use it. So for the homework, it's posted into the homework zero folder up here. And scroll down. The basic idea is that you're going to build a simple web page of your choice and get it published to the internet. So just like the lab, only it'll actually be a little bit more complicated of a web page and not just, uh, not just something blank. The uh, grading for this assignment should be uh, pretty straightforward. You should know exactly what your grade is when you submit it. There should be no guesses because I'm giving you the rubric right here. And there's a bunch of check boxes you can see. And if you just print this out and just check, do I have, do I meet this requirement? Check it off and, and then you're good. So this one right here, for example, three HTML files. I just have, you saw how to create one HTML file last time. You just have three of those in uh, your GitHub repository that you've uploaded. And then you check that requirements. We'll talk today about this idea of a CSS file. Um, we see it, saw last time about images. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other requirements about which types of tags you must, ha must that you must have. So for example, if you have an image tag, which you're required to have at least three of them, you must also have this alt text along with it. If you don't have alt text for your image tag, then you will not get this checkbox and you will miss one point right here. There are a handful. So most of these checkboxes are things that we will either have talked about or will talk about today. There are some of them, though, that we are not going to talk about. So as an example, there we go. This one right here, how to create a table inside of HTML with three columns and three rows. This is something that we are not going to talk about at all. And so the expectation is that you will either use the, uh, the textbook and look it in the textbook, how to do this, or you'll just Google how to create a table in HTML and copy and paste something from the internet. And um, this idea of using Google to, to figure things out is going to be an important one in this class. That uh, so there are no there is no program in the world who has a full understanding of HTML or a full understanding of CSS. Even the people who designed the specifications, they've forgotten things. Uh, everybody is relying on Google to to uh, tell us what to do to figure things out. And so I'm forcing you to use Google to figure things out in this class, forcing you to uh, read certain things to figure things out, just to get you in that habit of, I don't need to understand everything. I, I know how to, how to find the information that, that I need to know. Um, so that's the, the main discussion of grading so far. Any questions about anything so far? 
Yes. Sure. Is it, you know, this function be for navigation in the uh, um, So the question is, uh, can we have like a navigation menu bar at the top using these list tags? And that's actually what we're going to talk about today in class using uh, CSS is how to make a cool menu bar at the top of your web page for, uh, uh, for your web page. Um, let's see, so the assignment's worth 10 points, but there is extra credit that you can get. Every homework in this class will have a considerable amount of extra credit that you can get with it. And in this case, um, so your web page, there's no requirements that it like be pretty or um, have cool information on it. You can feel free to plagiarize whatever you want from wherever, I don't care. Uh, the way that I encourage you, however, to make a good web page that is something that people want to uh, visit that has original content on it. And the way that that will be graded is that if you choose to do that and you get it uh, somehow engagement with social media, so for example, upvotes on Reddit or uh, a thousand unique visitors based on what Google Analytics says, then you'll get uh, some extra credits. You are welcome to, well, I encourage you to do this both the white hat way, which means sort of like the legal way, the, the way that it's supposed to be done of actually getting a thousand people to visit your website by having good content on it. Uh, but you're also welcome to use these whatever black hat techniques that you want to use. So a black hat technique would be uh, paying somebody in Romania to uh, just click a thousand times on your web page. And there are uh, lots of different techniques like that that you can use, feel free to click that link and explore them. Um, and in general, for this assignment or any other assignment in this class, you're welcome to do uh, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to meet whatever requirement. And uh, I promise I won't turn you into the FBI, but if they catch you, then uh, you're on your own. In general, these, these black hat techniques for, for search engines, they're not actually illegal, but they will, uh, if Google catches you doing it, then they'll just take your website off of, off of Google so nobody can find it. Any questions about, let's see. So you should have in your mind this question about like, okay, what is CSS? We need to talk about that in order to make a cool web page. Uh, but any questions about just the mechanics of the homework assignment? So regarding the Facebook button, I learned out of it. So it doesn't actually appear in in Firefox, but it does appear in Chrome and Safari. So for all of these uh, social media things like Facebook buttons or the Google Analytics tracker, if you have your uh, uBlock origin enabled, it blocks those. If you uh, disable it, then it will not block it. And so I guess it's uBlock Origin and the decentralized plugins. Both of those you'd have to disable in order to actually see the, uh, uh, the like button. So the reason that Facebook wants everybody in the world to put a like button on their web page is because anybody who has a like button or a thumbs up button on their web page, uh, when you visit it, you send information off to Facebook about your, the current web page that you're on and the previous web pages that you've been on. Um, so that's why Facebook encourages everybody to have these buttons so that they can see, map out what people are visiting on the internet. And that's also why these, uh, these plugins like uBlock Origin block them so that Facebook can't track where you've been on the internet. Good question. Yeah. Are we able to ever go back and do extra credit or is it like, if we don't do this extra credit, you uh, that's a good question. The question is, uh, if two months from now you realize you need some extra credit, can you go back and do this extra credit? And the answer is no. That once the assignment's submitted, it's submitted as is, and I'm not going to uh, regrade it. Uh, there will be plenty more extra credit in the future, though. So uh, uh, if for whatever reason you don't have time to do this extra credit, there will be more that will come up. Yeah, so QCL in addition to their 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. with Aaron on Sunday and Thursday, you can set up uh, individual appointments. Um, I don't think I have the link to that on here, 
Um, but if you just go to the QCL's webpage, you can set up individual appointments. Or there's lots of other QCL tutors besides Aaron who, um, who can do the CS40 class. And so you can walk in at a different uh, time period and you might be able to catch somebody. Uh, for the uh, 100 dollars post on credit, when do you need that file? Is it also within 48 hours? Uh, so the extra credit is at time of submission. So the way the way the submission for this assignment works is that you'll submit the uh, actual URL to your web page on Sakai. And then if you chose to do the extra credit, you'll submit a screenshot of the uh, evidence that you have that you completed the um, whichever one of those two extra credits. Uh, say we want to continue working on our website after we submit it. Is that okay? Or should we just make it a copy of the form for development? Yeah, this is a good question about um, uh, after, after submitting this website, what can you do with it? And what you should, let's see. So one of the things that I want to encourage in this class is that these projects should not be like, like I should not be your target audience for, for these projects. These projects should be for things that, that you're either just interested in for whatever reason uh, by yourself, or you want to show to a future recruiter, or uh, you're just doing something for your friends. And so you should feel free to do whatever you want with, um, with, these, uh, with, with this web page that, that will make that happen. Um, these requirements up here, we'll, we'll see that you're, you're pretty much every web page is going to uh, complete these without, um, without too much difficulty. And so you can format things however you want, change things however you want after you've submitted it, totally okay. And if for whatever reason, like, uh, I don't know, you're making a, a web page about a video game, you think your web page uh, really doesn't need to uh, have a link tag to the CSS file or whatever other one of these things is not appropriate for your web page, and just let me know. And if I agree, I'll say, okay, you're away from that thing because you're doing something cool and that's the important thing is to do something cool. Um, good question. Any other questions? Uh, good question. So, uh, questions about how detailed is the feedback on these different assignments going to be? Uh, so at various points in this class, we'll talk about different coding styles, uh, but uh, unless if it's not in the, like actually in the rubric, it's not something that you're going to get uh, feedback on. So in this case, all of these are like very just uh, black and white things. Do you have a span tag in your HTML document? Uh, and there's nothing about like coding style in here. So if you do have, if you want any particular feedback of, on anything that's outside of this, uh, let me know and I'd be happy to give you uh, extra feedback. And every year there's uh, students who try to do something cool that they haven't done before and, uh, and want some feedback on that and I, I'm happy to provide it. Uh, but just let me know so that I can uh, uh, know to spend the extra time to, to do that for you. Okay, then if there's no other questions, we're going to get started with the content of class today. Sorry, could you share your screen, please, for the Zoom? Oh, yes, I can. I apologize. Thank you. Um, let's see. Maybe I can share my screen. There we go. Uh, I think that should be shared now. Uh, yeah, it works. Thank you. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah. So, Today in class, we're going over CSS, which again is how you make web pages pretty. HTML is how you put content in web pages. And CSS is how you make that content pretty. We're gonna switch over to VS Code here. And this right now that I have pulled up is 
in the week one folder. So everything that I'm doing is going to be in the week one folder, which will get uploaded onto GitHub so that you'll have access to it later. This stuff that I have right now, though, is in a, a website-section one folder. So let's make a new folder of website-section two for us, and we'll do everything inside of here. Close that and uh, there it is. New file. We'll create a new file called index.html because again, if you don't have a good name for your uh, HTML file yet, just call it index.html. And we're going to make this uh, a real quick web page about uh, books. So h1 my book web page slash h1. And so uh, we're going to start off with a new HTML tag, the ordered list, ol slash ol. Again, the h stands for header up here. One makes the header the biggest. Two would be a little bit smaller. Three, a little bit smaller than that. So this is the sort of title of my web page up here. And then I'm going to have a list of books right here. Somebody shout out a book. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Another book. Robinson. Robinson. Cur I don't know how to say it, spell Caruso. Caruso. U R U S O E. Just C R. Okay. Somebody shout out another book for me. I couldn't hear that. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. One more. Lord of the Rings. And let's control S to save this. And now we're going to go back over to uh, Firefox and open up the location of that file. So if you don't know where, uh, how to create the path and just type it in up here, you can always in Firefox go to the file open, open file up here to bring up the, uh, the normal menu to uh, select files from. And let's refresh this. So here's our website section two and then index.html. And this is what we've created so far. My book webpage up top, there's the nice big header. And then here are our four books that we've listed out. And back over here, um, so we have, again, LI is what creates each of these individual list items. LI stands for list items. And remember that we call tags that are next to each other. So LI is an example of a tag. We call tags that are next to each other, siblings of each other. And we call tags that are inside of another tag. So this LI tag is inside of the OL tag. We call li a child of ol, and ol is the parent of li. Um, what we haven't talked about yet is how to make things uh, stylistic. So let's try uh, changing the color of these list items here. And we're going to, I want you all to take a look at your cheat sheets and uh, pull up your CSS cheat sheet. That's what we're going to be talking about next. As you're doing that, I'll just emphasize that, uh, so this is our HTML cheat sheet over here, the HTML cheat sheet, and all these things that I was talking about with uh, list items and ordered lists are in this HTML cheat sheet. Um, so again, I'd recommend having all of these cheat sheets out in front of you uh, during lecture, and uh, if we, use it. You can make a star or something next to it just to emphasize that it's something that you've seen inside of class. Um, uh, but here's where you can find more information about creating lists. So on to CSS. There's many different uh, types of CSS. We're going to start with box two over here of places to write CSS. Three different styles. And we're going to start with what's called the inline style in uh, bullet point A right here. And here the element, remember, is the name of the tag. So this is, the tag name is element. Sometimes you'll hear people use element as a synonym for tag. 
but those are only people who are trying to be really, really fancy because tag is much easier to say than element. So I will always say tag. And then over here we have style equals and then something in quotation marks. This is called the attribute. The thing to the left of the equals is the attribute. So this is the style attribute. And its value is this thing in quotation marks over here. And this thing in quotation marks over here, everything in red is the actual CSS uh, for this particular tag. Let's now go back over here and see some examples. So in order to use CSS, I can say style equals, and then whatever I put inside of here is going to be the style of this tag. I can say color colon red to make everything turn red. The thing to the left of the colon is called the property, and the thing to the right of the colon is called the value. So it's a little bit confusing that we have two different types, we have two different values, two different things called values. An HTML value is everything to the right of the equals sign right here, and a CSS value is everything to the right of the colon right here. I'm going a little bit fast through all of these definitions because the, the definitions aren't super important. Um, again, you, on your quizzes, you're never gonna be asked what is the difference between an HTML value and a CSS value? That's not the kind of question that us computer scientists find valuable because that's just kind of trivia that uh, nobody really cares about. Um, uh, you'll just hear me using these terms and, uh, and so I'm, I'm intentionally using them a lot right now so that you just kind of absorb their intuition. So here to the left of the colon, it's called a property. So it's an attribute in HTML, a property in CSS. I sometimes confuse those two things, but in a tutorial, it'll always be an attribute and a property. If you read the textbook, it's always an attribute and a property. And then over here is the CSS value. The CSS value for a color can be a name like red or green or blue. And if you type in, start typing things, um, uh, VS Code will helpfully show you what uh, some possible values are. So like blue violet instead of just blue. You can also put in a formula instead of just a, uh, instead of a name. And if you hover your mouse over the, uh, after you've typed something up here, hover your mouse over it, it'll bring up this little formula picker and you can select, oh, I want this kind of nice shade of green like this. And it'll put the, uh, the formula right here for you. Yes. Style is the attribute, and this is an HTML attribute. Everything in quotations is the HTML value. Inside, uh, so everything that's kind of orange right here, this is all the CSS code. The CSS Right here, this is the property, color is a property, and this over here is the CSS value of the property color. Um, let's get to that in a little bit. So hold on to that thought. Um, so at this point, we just have one, uh, one property here and let's go check it out and see what it makes our web page look like. Refresh this F5 and we can see that up here Harry Potter is now in green and actually this one over here is also in green. So when we set the uh, the CSS properties of a list item it doesn't just change the properties of the list item itself it changes the properties of the entire like list item, not just the text, but including this number over here to the left. So what would I do if I wanted to change just the uh, color of this text and not change the color of this one? What I have to do is somehow apply the color to just this text right here without applying it to this list item. And there's a special tag in HTML called the span tag, span like this, which uh, has, no, has no meaning all by itself. So the span tag like this does nothing by itself. But what it, you can do with it is you can just take some attributes, some CSS, and put it right here. And 
and you can style the span tag to have any other kind of formatting that you want it to have. And now the, the style is inside of the span tag and not inside of the list item. Let's see what happens. Save that, control S, back over here, F5 to refresh. And you see that this one is now black uh, because the span only encompasses Harry and Potter and doesn't encompass this number one to the left. If we um, move this span, whoops, and this should be a slash span over here because it's a closing tag. Remember, anything that starts with a slash is a closing tag. Anything that doesn't start with a slash is an opening tag. So this is a closing span tag. This is an opening span tag. And now this is going to apply only to the word Harry. F5, and now only Harry is green. The one and Potter are both black. Um, so yeah, many of you probably have lots of questions about how to do more advanced things with uh, CSS and, and HTML. Um, but at this point, are there any questions just about, uh, I guess, directly about what I've done with the span tag or the color or uh, this formula, things that I've just done? Yes? So when you pass it out without the closing span, it still works. Why is that bad? So what kind of mistakes you have there? Yeah, this is a great question. So uh, the question was that I've, I previously had this typo without a slash over here. And when I did that, uh, everything still seemed to work. And so come over here, press F5. And so Harry and Potter are uh, it's totally in green. Um, HTML is what we call a forgiving language that uh, Firefox or Chrome or uh, Safari, whatever you're using, it's going to, when it encounters an error in your, in your code, so like here I have an error, it's going to do its best to try to figure out what it was that you intended to mean. And that's because when somebody visits a web page, if the web page is broken, you still want to see as much as you can of the web page. Uh, in this case, let's see, what I originally had was span over here like this. So we didn't see any difference between that and this. Uh, when I had it like uh, this and took away this slash right here. Now, now what Firefox was guessing was that I wanted Potter to be inside of this span tag and both Harry and Potter to be inside of this span tag. And then when it encountered this closing tag, it said, hey, both these two span tags are inside of the opening tag for list item. So let's close both of these two span tags as well. Um, correct, so span is not self-closing. Uh, the only two self-closing things that we've seen so far are the BR tag, BR, and the image tags, source equals something. These are um, the only self-closing tags that, um, that we use. The only ones that I can even think of. There's a special tag that's sort of like a uh, self-closing tag called the comment tag. This, anything that's contained within inside of this, you'll see that it's showing up as green. And here, this is a comments showing up as green in here um, just to highlight that nothing none of this is going to be displayed anything that's contained within this uh, less than I pronounce excla exclamation points as bang because that's a lot easier to say than exclamation point so exclamation or less than bang dash dash and dash dash greater than anything between these two symbols is not going to get displayed come over here f5 not displayed uh, so these are self-closing. This is kind of self-closing because there's no closing tags, but it's not really an HTML tag either. It's kind of just its own separate thing. Okay, so this is, um, let's see. So in practice, people don't actually use these inline tag styles or inline CSS uh, ever. The reason for that is because they're, um, they require a lot of copying and pasting to get things that actually work well. So let's say I want not just Harry Potter to be green, but I want all of my uh, list items to be green. There we go. 
And so we've now styled Harry Potter as green. If I want to style everything else as green too, then I have to copy and paste all of this. Control C, Control V. Whoops, I missed. Undo, Control V, Control V, save, come back over to uh, Firefox, refresh, and now everything is in fact green. And that may not seem like a lot of work to you, but to me that was just a huge pain in the butt. And um, what's even more of a pain in the butt is that if I ever want to change these, like I realize that I don't like green and I want to use blue instead, then I have to change it not just in one spot, but change it everywhere. So now I've picked out my new color blue, and I have to go, okay, that should be 54, that should be 165, that should be 54, that should be one, ah. 54, that should be 165, and then that should be 54, that should be 165. Control save. Back over to Firefox F5, and now everything is blue. So not, I don't know, maybe not too bad if there's only four things here, but if you're like making a, a web page like Facebook that has thousands of different HTML tags inside of it, you don't want to have to type out these things thousands of different times. And so that's where the second type of CSS is going to uh, come in. Let's go back to our CSS cheat sheet. And we'll look at uh, part B right here, the style tag. So we're gonna learn a new tag right now, the style tag uh, for uh, putting uh, CSS inside of. This style tag, in order to talk about it, we're first gonna go back to this HTML cheat sheet and look at bullet point two right here. Kind of totally ignored this last week in class and uh, have ignored it so far today, but this is the traditional structure of an HTML document, that you have an HTML tag, adds the outermost thing, and then a header section, and then a body section. The header section contains just uh, things that don't actually get displayed to the user, and the body section contains everything that does get displayed to the user. So let's go ahead and modify my website real quick to have that format. So let's add an HTML up top, and then a head slash head, nothing in the header yet, and a body, and then down here at the bottom, a slash body and a slash HTML. Recall that in HTML, white space doesn't matter, so I could leave things like this as they are, but it's uh, traditional in HTML that all children of a parent node should be indented to a level greater than that parent node. That way it makes it really easy to see who's a child and who's a parent of what. So H1 here is a child of body, so that's why I indented H1 inside a body. And uh, body is a child of HTML, so body is indented inside of HTML. Body and head are siblings of each other, so that's why they are at the same level. And it's also common or tradition for the opening tag and the closing tag to be at the same indentation level. So here, the opening body tag is indented one, so the closing body tag should also be indented one like this. It's not required to do that, but um, it's tradition. Every time you see a web page formatted, it'll always be formatted in this type of style right here. So let's go ahead and Control S, save this, come back to Firefox, and hopefully we'll see that the web page looks exactly the same if I refresh it. And yes, it does. I'm pressing F5 to refresh right now. Press this button up here to refresh. It looks exactly the same. We added a bunch of HTML tags, but they don't actually do anything. They're just kind of for show or just for, um, uh, just for, just for the developer working on it to, to format things better. But let's see. So that was the that was this HTML cheat sheet, what's going on right here. Inside of this head tag is where the style tag goes. So over here now, the style tag. So this is uh, bullet point B under three ways to write CSS. You can put things in the style tag. And so let's see now examples of how to do that. And this is um, a much more common way to write CSS is to have a style tag like this 
And then inside of the style tag is where you put your CSS code. So I could put something like, let's cut that and paste it up here. It's traditional to have your CSS be indented to be the same level of the style tag. And you'll see actually that uh, there's this sort of red squiggly, like a typo sort of message. Um, and it's saying that I have an error message in my CSS right now. So the format of CSS in the style tag is a little bit different, a little bit more complicated than the format in this inline CSS. The reason is because not only do we have to specify the properties and their values, what we want the display to be, we have to specify which tag we want it to apply to. So in order to do that, I'll type the name of the tag, li, right here, then curly brace. This is called an opening curly brace on a US keyboard. It's the letter above the square bracket which is right above the enter key. And then a closing curly brace down here like this. Everything inside of curly braces is called a block and everything to the left of the curly brace right here is called the CSS selector. The CSS selector tells us which of the tags we're going to select and apply this attribute to. So here we're going to apply it to all tags with an LI. So LI right here. And let's go ahead and delete this, delete all of these, like so. Delete and delete. So now instead of having to specify my, uh, my color blue in all four locations, I only have to specify it in one spot up here and I can change it to be whatever I want. Let's go ahead and change it back to, uh, let's change it to red now and control S to save. Let's come back over to Firefox over here, F5, and now everything is in red like this. Again, so the key takeaway is with this style tag, I only have to specify the, uh, the attributes once or the properties once it reduces the amount of redundancy reduces the amount of typing I have to do. And since I'm lazy, I like not typing. And so this is how a much better way of specifying CSS. This stuff between curly braces. Remember, this is called a curly brace. The stuff between curly braces is called a block. The stuff to the left of the curly brace is called the CSS selector. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about these CSS selectors here in a minute. Any questions so far? We just did a lot of things kind of right after each other. Go ahead. Does the indentation have to be like that? Question is, uh, does indentation in CSS have to, does it matter? And the answer is no, that uh, it can be whatever we want and things will, will still work. So that F5 still works. Uh, so the common indentation practice is uh, sort of what I have listed right here of CSS selector, then the curly brace, and then properties, one per line, separated by a semicolon. Let's go ahead and take a look at another property right now, the background. Background dash color. So color controls the foreground, background color controls the background. And let's make our background color... Um, Blue, red on blue. Not a very pretty color scheme, but uh, just check that it works. There we go. A lot of, a lot of blue. Uh, there are many other uh, properties. If we come over to, uh, again, the CSS uh, cheat sheet, these properties are ones that I would uh, recommend using on your um, especially these text properties are good for controlling the uh, uh, how, how your text appears, what it's font, what's bold, italic, uh, what size it is, things like that. And so on your homework assignments, uh, make good use of these ones right here. Basically, any type of formatting that you might possibly want to do in CSS or for your web page, you can do in CSS with properties. This is less than 1% of the available properties for any any uh, tag that you can apply to it. And uh, so if you just Google, I wanna make my text upside down, uh, then there'll be a CSS property that'll do that for you. 
Uh, we're not going to talk about the vast majority of these, um, but you'll have to just experiment with them in your web page to see uh, what they do and what you like and don't like. Let's see. So here um, is an one list. Let's create another list down here, and um, let's do. Uh, so the top one is books. That one had an H1. Let's do an H2 now of famous characters. And uh, somebody name out some characters from a book. Gandalf. Let's get another one. Who? Dora. Dora. Wait, are you talking about from this specific book? Any, any books? I just can't hear you. I'm sorry. Dora. Dora. D o r a h. Another one. One more. Sorry, I can't hear you. Voldemort. So I do have uh, particularly bad ears. Normally I rely quite a bit on uh, lip reading while uh, uh, listening to people, but that doesn't work when everyone's wearing masks. So apologize if I have to ask you to repeat. Uh, but here's some famous characters like this. And notice, so I'm going to save this, come back over to our web page and uh, refresh this web page and you'll see that all of our uh, styles, all of our CSS that we did up here applies to this down here as well. Uh, so that's maybe nice, maybe not nice depending on what you're trying to do. That if you're trying to make your um, all of your lists everywhere look the same, then that was really easy. We didn't have to do anything. But maybe we want this list up here to be like a menu that people can select from and this list to be just an ordinary list. We don't want any special formatting on this list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, specify a new attribute inside of here called the class of the tag. And we'll say class equals menu like this. Equals menu. And whoops, we'll apply it to each of these. So there's a little bit of obnoxious cutting and pasting right there for now. Um, class equals menu. Uh, we'll see how to do that in a little bit, but for what I'm going to do right now, no. Uh, we have class equals menu, and then up here I want to do dot menu. And so this CSS selector notice is a little bit different than this one up here, because this one begins with a dot. If it begins with a dot, then it means it's a class selector. So it's going to find things whose class match whatever is after the dot. Without the dot, it's a tag selector. And so it's going to find uh, tags that match. So it's the tag li. Here is anything with the class equals menu. And I want my, my list items, these list items down here to be normal, and these ones to be the kind of funky ones. So I'm going to take all of this and copy and paste it, control X right here, control V, and now control S to save this, and come back over here, F5 to load this, and now we have a normal list down here, but the weird goofy list up here. And the reason this one is normal, again, is because the only styles that we have defined up here are in this dot menu, this class selector menu and these do not have a class associated with them. If I were to do something like class equals menu to Dora, then over here, we would get uh, that it applies. Um, it's a good question. The question is, does the name of a class, is it typically in quotes? And the answer is that if you have a value, whatever that value is for an attribute. Um, so we saw this before for a tags, the href attribute is um, has a URL as a value. If the value has no spaces inside of it, you do not need quotation marks. But you can all, it's never wrong to provide quotation marks. You could provide single quotation marks or double quotation marks like this. And 
it's all exactly the same. So we'll save that, come back over here, F5, and this is all, all these are displayed exactly the same. I'm personally lazy, so anytime I can get, get away without typing a uh, quotation mark, my pinky is happy, and I prefer not to. But if you prefer quotation marks, then uh, it's up to you. Let's see, so there was a question before about, well, what if I'm really lazy and I don't want to type class equals menu on all of these things, and I come up here and say class equals menu like that. Can I get away with not putting class equals menu anywhere else? And if we're really clever about our CSS, um, we'll be able to do this. But let's first take a look. There we go. That was how to save that. Come over here, F5. And now you can see that that blue kind of expanded over a little bit more because it's uh, this section over here was not originally, it's not in the list items. It's kind of part of the entire list. And so now that it's the entire list that's blue. Um, so it's a subtle difference. Maybe it's what you want. Maybe it's not what you want. Um, uh, but that's uh, something that you can do and play around with. Um, for now, let's stick with this and, um, and keep working on, we're going to make, turn the, turn these list items into a cool sort of cool menu bar at the top that you can click on and go to different uh, web pages. Are there any questions so far about anything that I've done though? Yes. Let's see, so here this uh, menu class since it's dot menu, it, can, it doesn't only have to apply to list items. It can apply to, say, if we had a paragraph. We probably don't want a paragraph menu, but just for uh, to illustrate, paragraph, slash, P, like this. Save, come back over here, F5, and now the paragraph is also has this funky formatting. If we wanted this, uh, this, our rules right here are our properties to only apply to list item menus and not to paragraph menus, then we can do li.menu like this. And now I'll control S, save that, come back over here, F5. And now even though this is a class equals menu, it's a paragraph class equals menu, so the rule doesn't apply. It only applies to these ones up here. These uh, CSS selectors, again, this whole thing right here is called the CSS selector. And the, um, there's fairly complicated formulas that you can go through to uh, generate these CSS selectors. And that's going to be the uh, sort of subject of our quiz is I'm going to give you a CSS selector and you're gonna to have to tell me which of the HTML tags are gonna get selected by that selector. So for the rest of class today, uh, we're pretty much going to be talking about the different selectors that there are here and which, uh, which tags down here they end up applying to. Any questions about why this selected these tags right here but did not select this tag right here? Okay. So another uh, important CSS selector is the ID selector. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yep. So uh, we can now let's do li dot first like this and um, let's do text uh, decoration style dashed. Come back over here, F five. Um, 
was probably not a good thing to select. Um, text. Well, let's, let's do, just keep it with color and background. Move background here like this, save and come over here and if I, uh, hmm, let's, so this uh, oh this I see what I'm doing wrong so our goal was to have both of these two styles being applied to this tag right here in HTML you're not supposed to have two classes you're not supposed to have two attributes that are have the same uh, name of the attribute. If you want to define using two different uh, classes, it goes like this. Menu and first. I can also ask you. Um, let's see. So this is a important question that, um, and it'll take me a little bit to answer it, but here what we're doing, so I'm going to circle around to answering that, the, the full question a little bit. Here what we're doing is I'm defining that this, this list item right here is part of two separate classes, the menu class and the first class. And up here, uh, so this is what the menu class does. It makes something red. Down here, the first class makes the background blue. So let's save that and come over here, F5. And so the first two things have a blue background and the second two things uh, do not. But everything has the red text because everything is part of the menu class. Um, these, uh, there are lots of rules. Let's see, so now what if I wanted to do something like, uh, the first has also specifies a color, but it specifies a different color. And now which of these two colors is going to get applied? Uh, because how does it know which color to select from, from this class or this class? And there are lots of uh, detailed rules that we're not going to cover about how um, Firefox, all of these, we call them rendering engines, that render the CSS and HTML, how they decide which set of rules should be applied. Uh, the, the textbook goes into those details, but we're not going to, to cover them. Um, so let's go ahead and save this real quick. Come back over here, F5. And so now these are black on blue, uh, and these are red down here. What, um, let's see. One, the next thing for us to uh, cover though is what if, let's, let's, so these are um, CSS classes up here. It's a class selector because there's a dot. This part is the class selector. This part over here is the tag selector. And the next uh, type of selector that we'll talk about is the ID selector, hashtag, and then I'll do hashtag first. Like this. And um, the hashtag is not for specifying uh, something that's a class, it's for specifying the ID. So here we'd say ID equals first, like this, and save this. And um, let's see add a rule of the first one should have a, a blue background and everything else will not. And come back over here in F5 and the first one has a blue background, but everything is red. The, uh, there's, no difference from our perspective right now about IDs and classes. They are, uh, for everything that we're going to do in this class, fully interchangeable. It's just tradition that an ID is for something that you only have one of. So there's only like one first element in a list, and so there's only one ID. In a class, we have several 
several of these menu items. And so there's, uh, that's why I chose to use a class for menu and an ID for first. But the important thing, syntax wise, so like syntax is what you actually type in. The important thing syntax wise here is that if you use a hashtag up here, it must be an ID down here. If you use a dot up here, then it must be a class down here. In both cases, you can put the, uh, the name of the tag in front of it or not. It's up to you. Uh, and it just makes it so that it specifies only that tag if you put it in front. So let's save that, come up here, F5, and we still get the same thing, but now it's using this uh, ID selector instead of a class selector. All of this is inside of your CSS uh, cheat sheet in the top right. Up here, we've talked about this element name, dot class name, and hashtag ID under this uh, basic selectors. What we're gonna talk about next is combinators, which I think um, there's been a couple of questions that are uh, essentially asking about this combinator concept. And this is how you combine all of these uh, things that we've done so far into more complicated selections. So let's come back over here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, uh, let's change this one down here from an ordered list, OL, to a UL, unordered list. Let's first see what happens. UL, unordered list, Control S, save, back over here to Firefox, F5, and no longer numbers, but bullet points. So an unordered list has bullet points, an ordered list has numbers. And what I wanna do is specify styling that applies only to this, but not to this, without using either of these classes or these IDs. And I'm gonna use the combinators to do that. If I want to say, specify just, uh, well, we already have an li up here. Let's make all list items have the color red. Like this. And for now, we'll take away, nothing is gonna have a blue background. And we'll save this. Come back over here, F5, and now everything is red again, up here and down here. In order to use the combinators to make the bottom part, uh, only the bottom part be red. What I can do is in the style, I first specify a parent tag or an ancestor tag. So this will be the uh, unordered list tag, UL. And then I specify the child tag or the descendant tag, LI, with a space between them. And a space indicates that LI should be a child or a descendant of UL. If I had a hashtag between them, then li would be the tag name, or sorry, the tag ID, um, but with a space, li is now a descendant of ul. And now if I, down here, specify the color, save that, come over here, f5, um, whoops, let's see, something, something went wrong. Unordered list, list item. Uh, what, rent, what went wrong is that I have a typo up here in my CSS. And you can see that there's this red squiggly line right here indicating that there's a, a spelling mistake, basically. There shouldn't be this extra curly brace right there. So delete that, Control S, save this back over here, F5, and now only this bottom part is in red. And again, the CSS selector right here, this ULLI, UL is the uh, ancestor, LI is the descendant. And so these LIs, have, they have an OL as their parent, not a UL, but these ones have a UL. So that's why that rule is applying to, to these tags down here, but not to these tags up here. Um, we'll see, um, so for the quiz, there's going to, we're gonna, look at all the different uh, possible combinations of these combinators and, uh, and you'll be responsible for every one of the combinators that's on the, um, on the cheat sheet up here in the top right and understanding what they're selecting and what they're not selecting.
We're, uh, we'll cover that though on at the beginning of Friday's lab. We'll just go over the, the quiz um, to cover all these concepts. What I wanna finish up today with is I promised that we were going to make a menu for our web page that we were gonna turn this list right here into a menu of things that people can click. And so let's do that real quick. So the, uh, we're gonna do the li.menu. That's where I wanna put the, uh, the properties that we need. And I'm gonna do, let's say, we'll make the color white, the background color will be black like this. And I'm going to add one more rule saying that the display will be inline dash block. And what the inline dash block is going to do, so the, the original display value, the default one is block. The inline block is going to say, we don't need all of these to be on separate lines. They can all be actually on the uh, same line. And so we'll come back over here, press F5. And now we have all of these things on the same line up here. What I'll do next is do li.menu colon hover. This colon hover is called a pseudo class. Anytime you see a colon, it's called a pseudo class. And the hover pseudo class is going to uh, activate anytime the mouse is over the elements matching to the left. So anytime one of our menu list items has the mouse hovering over it, this will activate and we'll change the color or the background color background dash color, we'll make it red instead of black. So control S, save that. Up here, F5, refresh that. And now whenever my mouse is over one of these things, the whole, uh, the whole box turns red. The, uh, anytime you see a pseudo class, these are things that are built into uh, web browsers, built into Firefox and Safari and Chrome. And so never anything that you have to add yourself. These are only things that you put in the HTML and never, sorry, only in the CSS and never in the HTML. The classes and the IDs and the tags, however, are things that you have to put into the HTML and the CSS. Next, what we wanna do is specify what the uh, width of these things are gonna be so that they look a little bit nicer. We'll do width colon, let's try 20%. These are things that you just have to kind of uh, play around with to see what looks good or not good for your particular problem. Here, uh, so 20% is not big enough because Robinson Crusoe and Lord of the Rings are uh, too big for 20%. So let's try going oops, back here and let's try uh, 25%. Reload that. And now everything fits on one line in the box, but you see this other box bleeds down over here, uh, comes down onto the bottom row because we have all of these sort of spaces between, uh, between each of our items. And so the 25% um, is a little bit too big because 25% times four plus all these extra spaces adds up to more than 100%. So we'll fix that here in a second, but first I want to show how to make these buttons clickable. So if we come back over here down to the LI, and one thing we can do, the thing that's maybe most obvious is add a href equals something like, we'll just go to google.com like this around Harry Potter slash a like that, control S to save, back up here, F5 to refresh. And you can see that now Harry Potter is a link. If I put my mouse over it like this, it's something that I can click on. But now this part of the button over here, it turns red, but it's not something that I can click on. I'm double clicking right now, but it's not taking me anywhere. And so when you're making menu buttons like this, what you wanna do is not just wrap the text in the A tag, but wrap the whole list item itself in the A tag. So I'll do the Robinson Caruso wrapped like this slash a control s save up here f5 f5 refresh and now you can see that uh, my mouse cursor changes when i'm hovering over robinson crusoe so it's something that i can click on right here and these ones over here are not not things that i can click on i can click on the text of harry potter but i can't click on the box 
for Robinson Crusoe, I can not only click on the text, I can click on the box. The, uh, the, the way that this link is styled right here is something that uh, it's just a default CSS values, making things purple if it's a link. So if I wanted to change what the, the links look like, I could change that with CSS. But by putting the A outside, it sort of automatically does that for me because it gets the, the color from the, uh, the list item. That's uh, all of our time for today. So we'll... Uh, uh, the way to fix this is so is you uh, have the A tag outside of the list item so that it's in the entire box that gets applied. Uh, the, the A tag to A again is something that you can click on. And by putting the uh, list item inside, it uses the coloring of the list item. It always uses the coloring of the thing that's the most recent. So the list item coloring overrides the A coloring here. Uh, next time we'll, uh, so we'll go over exactly what this, uh, uh, all the answers are for this practice quiz that you'll have a real quiz on Monday. And we'll also fix the last little bit of our menu right here so that it's, not bleeding onto multiple lines. Um, so that's it for today. If there's any more questions, I'll stick them around as long as people have questions. Otherwise, I will uh, see you all on Friday. Oh yeah, so this uh, quiz is not something that's due ever. It's something that we'll go over in class in lab. So you're welcome to look at it before lab if you want, but you're not required to. Um, I had a question about the lab from last Friday. Sure. So for the Facebook likes, how do I see how many likes there are? Uh, so uh, I can tell there's an error in this right now because yeah. it's uh, it's not showing your web page. That when you went to uh, Facebook and you created that like HTML snippet to copy and paste, yeah. there's a spot where you had to put in the uh, URL for your website. Yeah. And I think there's a typo. So it's supposed to put the face. Facebook link or my website link? It needs to be whatever the actual URL is um, the, the, the like button here. Okay. Um, and then secondly, how do I get that bar that you have up there? Do you know how you set your computer down? Yeah. Uh, see those two? Yeah. Put that, yeah, put that. There you go. And now if you press the open folder, you can open up. Uh, okay. So you had a folder open. Okay. Yeah. So, You have your GitHub connected to this? Yeah, because it's how it's supposed to be. Because that's the thing that they're about. I get it, but I just don't know. I think if you just link, go to the folder. Well, so like, it's like, for example, right here, I have two weeks zeros. I just don't know. I don't want to accidentally delete the one I just.